What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, the takeover of Tottenham on Tour and Superman Bob Spur. First of all, apologies for the delay. We have had technical issues beyond technical issues. But Bob, how are you, brother? All good, all good. Who would have thought we would have taken you this long to do your hair? Yeah, I know. I mean, look, I'm, I'm know, actually looking man. quite smart. I'm uh, fresh and my, my nice shave. I don't look like but, Mora now. But yeah, no, apologies, guys. Massive technical issues. The boys don't pay their bills on time. What can we say? <laughs> what can you say? But we are here. Uh, before we start talking everything Tottenham, you will see something very special here. Um, Bob, do you want to tell them what this is all about? Yeah, so uh, some people might be aware I did a 24-hour stream um, in, for, for the charity of, of, of NHS and Princess Alexandra Hospital in particular. Um, you might be aware, what, only, what, about four months ago? March. Three. I was, yeah, yeah, about three months ago. Well, up until three, four yep. months ago, I was in the hospital, in a coma, fighting for my life. And the lovely NHS, who we take for granted at times, yep. um, looked after me. So I did a 24 hour charity stream, raised some cash, raised some funds, and uh, got in touch with Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Big up to Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. We always hear the bad side of them. Well, mostly hear the bad side of them. But they did get back to me and they've sent through a signed pennant by the first teamers at Spurs. And and they've said, yep, auction it off. And any money that's raised will go towards the uh, charity. Uh, there is also a certificate of or authentic, authenticity. Always struggle with that word. Authent yeah, whatever. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a real deal. It's, it's, it's official. So yeah, um, if you want to make a bid for it, please contact me via Twitter, DM me. It's open to all, uh, at Bobsburr73. But what, you know, what a statement really, isn't it? Yep. It's, it's what a, a great gesture. It is a fantastic gesture. Like I said, I mean, people won't know, obviously, when you were in your coma, I was trying to, or a few of us were trying to get together to arrange a, a clap for you or to get something on the screen, and Spurs got back to me and said, listen, things like that have got to be done by the fans. It's only uh, players and, and children that we do this for. But they said, we will send you a signed letter from yep. Antonio Conte, yep. which they also did as well. So fair play to them on that side. Big up. But now, let's talk about what everyone's coming here to talk about. And there's been quite a lot of news today and this is probably why we had technical issues just so we could get yeah. some more more stuff so we're going to start with it's a basically a trilogy of uh, we know Paratici is over in Italy um, trying to organize some deals so we're going to look at these deals or talk about these deals and the first one is Sampdoria looking at Brian Hill mm. what's your thoughts on that yeah I mean considering it's supposed to be the next Messi it's not really worked out worked out for him and um, I think he needs another loan. Personally, I'd, if it's not worked out for him by now, uh, it's another loan deal, isn't it? That Sampdoria are looking at. Maybe Premiership just isn't Premier League just isn't for him. Um, he needs to go to a team where he's going to get first team regular football. It's not going to be with us. Yeah, I mean, I've spoken about this. Uh, Will Stewart as well. I, I didn't understand this transfer from the get go. Mm. Um, especially seeing that we're with the Tomiyasu and both at the Olympics and then losing Lamella in the deal as well, whether you liked him or not. It, now, if you look at 25 million plus Lamella, yeah. it's looking like a, a deal that has gone Pete Tong. But the, the thing I don't get with this is obviously he played well for bits in the Europa uh, Conference yep. and he looked like he had something. And then, all right, we want to send him out on loan. So we send him out to Spain when he was saying struggling to get to grips with the English game and whatever. So we sent him out to where he's uh, comfortable in Spain. Mm. And he comes back. And now he could be going off to Italy. I yep. mean, I, I, maybe there is a play that I don't think there is, but maybe there is. Maybe there is. But I I think he should go on loan to a premiership or, or, or challenging championship team. But do you think the fact that it is only loan deals that are coming in for him says more about the player than, than, than Tottenham? If Tottenham had the chance, would they sell him? I don't know. I don't know. I mean... I would. Yeah. I would, because this one looks like another one that we've just got in, may not work. And one of the problems we have is obviously keeping players for way too long. Yeah. Or giving them new contracts and then not getting rid of people when when it's clearly not working. And this one, I, I, I don't know. I mean, from what I was talking with Simeon yesterday here, apparently Marseille 
are also interested as yep. well. And I'm not a big follower of the French League, but Simeon was saying that the French League is a little bit more physical. Mm. So maybe a move there might do him better. Do you think the same? Maybe, maybe. I, I just think, for me, it's all about if he's going to fit into the Tottenham team. Yep. Um, as harsh as it sounds, I don't care where he goes. Um, he's clearly not going to improve our squad. Um, if he goes away and becomes a better player and, and adds something to our squad two years down the line, then so be it. But right now, yeah, I think best for him is to go to another club and prove himself there. And if that ends up in, in, a, in, a, in a permanent buy, then so be it. So there you go. He could be heading off to Sampdoria. But now this is the one I really want to talk about. And it is Jose Mourinho is mm. interested in reuniting with Joe Roden. Mm. And this one has come right out of left field for me. But I can see why. When we had Joe Roden, his best form, obviously, he was bought under Jose. And I, th I personally think the game's building up to Jose Sacking. He was our best defender. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. But he's never had that starting berth, has he? He's never been consistent in our first team 11. And for, what, three, four managers to have not picked him continuously there's something there maybe his attitude's not right maybe there's some personal thing going on I don't want to go into alleged things yeah. but maybe there's something there that's the reason why he's not been able because look he came in towards the end of the North London derby Conte d d trusted him with that um, obviously the it was a bit of an anticlimactic f uh, end day end of day for him because he had to go home half at half time didn't he with a dodgy belly or something. So, um, yeah, there's a reason why he's not been... Because when he plays for Wales, it's, it's, you can see what the talent... Well, there's a talent there. But, yeah, for him not to play consistently and being picked, especially when we're looking for a, a left-footed defender, just says something a bit more. It, it does. And if you look at it, Mourinho brought him in. Obviously, it was Scrinyard that we wanted, wasn't it, at the time? And... Uh, <laughs> That deal didn't go through for obvious reasons, or not for obvious reasons. We just couldn't agree the fee. <laughs> no, we, um, know the, we know the reasons. Staying, we know the reasons. I'm staying away from that. Um, but obviously, Roden came in, and he was well. He was uh, well sought after. A lot of uh, faith was in him, and people were thinking this is an up and coming prospect. Made his debut against Chelsea. I remember made a couple of mistakes, but rest of the game he was fantastic. And then got the occasional run in with Mourinho. But you're right, no one trusted him. No. No, no. I don't think he. Put, I mean. Uh, I don't think he played a minute under nope. uh, Ma uh, Mason. No. Nope. Nuno then came in, didn't see anything. Nope. And now Antonio Conte. So you've got to think, like you said, for Wales, and especially with Ben Davies, he's got a good partnership there. Yeah. He shows that he is capable of playing at international level, but if for some reason he just can't get it. And what do you reckon about a move to Italy? It's like Chris Smalling, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it could work out. There is a player in him. You know, yep. we're, not, we're not saying he's a rubbish player. There's obviously there's a reason why he's not fitting into the Tottenham, Tottenham lineup, Tottenham squad even at times, and um, yeah, I think if if he goes uh, to uh, to uh, Sampdoria, I think he'll be um, or oh, sorry Roma, he'll be absolutely fantastic there, Sampdoria or even Sampdoria <laughs> in Italy. Uh, but no, I, I think wherever he goes, he'll, he'll he'll be he'll do fine. There is a player there. Like I say, the fact we're looking for a left-sided defender. And we were saying to come in and compete against a Ben Davis, not a Roden, I think quite clearly states. But it'd be interesting to see what the guys uh, think in the comments, why they think Roden's not getting any minutes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be another loan or, or this is going to be a, a straight out fee. Uh, but if it was a fee, what do you reckon we could get for him? Do you reckon we, we're holding his value at the 14 million or, or around that we paid for him? Uh, I'd be very surprised if we get any, anywhere above 20. The only reason why we'd get good money, goodish money for him is for his um, w um, performances for Wales. Yeah, you can't really no no international, no national, no European teams going to look at his performances um, at, uh, at Spurs and think right is valued at X amount. But um, yeah, I think the quality is there to see to an extent. But I'd be very surprised if we get twenty plus. What do you reckon? Uh, do you know what? I think he's a young. Young young lad, going out there, I reckon we could get our money back for him. I, yeah. I, I really do, but only because of his age and his, his like I said, his yeah. international. Um, he hasn't really uh, enhanced his fee with his, his uh, game time for Spurs, but it looks like 
there could be a reunion uh, with Mourinho and Joe Rodham. So uh, we'll wait and see what happens there. And then the final part of this trilogy, Spurs are apparently looking at, and I'm going to have to try and say this, <laughs> Zaniolo. Yes. I hope Iggy doesn't hold me hold it against me. He's already corrected me. Oh, oh has he? Yeah, yeah, I said Zaniola. There we go. For my sins. There you and go. Uh, I don't think he's my friend anymore. So, <laughs> obviously, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to confess to say, no, I know a lot about this guy, but we did speak to Iggy, and Iggy uh, said yeah. a few bits. Yeah, ba basically, he says, look, good player. Um, an attacking midfielder like we all know uh, technically very good but what worries Iggy and I've seen this comment a couple of times is his two ACLs he's had in space of two years um, st stats wise he's not not that bad he's not the greatest but certainly um, you know it's uh, it's something that uh, a position that certainly we, we should be looking at as far as I'm concerned is he the answer is he the player who'd personally be on my appears to be my first choice not really but hey if Iggy says he's worried about the two ACLs then uh, Iggy being the fountain of knowledge when it comes to all things <laughs> Italian football he just burped into the speaker no I said all oh, right okay <laughs> um yeah so uh yeah uh, if, if Iggy has worries about him then so do I yeah I mean a ACLs are are huge injuries to come back from. I don't. Is it, did Iggy say if it was the same ACL or, or no, one on each? One on each knee. Oh my god. Yeah. So it's. It's that's like, like our technical issues this morning. I just think we we should be in a position where we bring in a player without a butt, and that's no, our year in that statement. It should be a case of good player, but one for the future. Good player, but worried about his injury list. Good player, but um, I just think we need to we need to look at uh, the next level of signings now we've got the manager in place we've certainly made a couple of signings that potentially could take us to the next level if there's any doubt about a player I think we're beyond that now we should be beyond that now we should believe it expect it and want it we have got a couple of super chats though um, let's Mr Daigle those. let's do them Will I was going to call him Will Smith Will Stewart member of 21 months get in there Will big up Will Bob is tyre 34,567 but he is the best. Say that again. I'm, t I'm, I'm a tier. Okay. I'm a tier three, 34,567. Okay. So at least I'm not bottom. No. No, not so bad. So big up, Will. Member for 21 months, man. That's incredible. That is um, incredible, incredible support. Um, Everyone check out War THFC. Yeah, as definitely, well. definitely. He loves his stats. He does. Statistically, he's one of the, he is the biggest. American, no. American, yeah. American channel. It was Correct. first channel. Correct. He there you go. Indeed. What more could you want? Another super chat. Brandon Troller. Oh, Troller? Man. Troller? Troller. Troller. Left field question. But whatever happened to Jack Clark? <laughs> Kids have got to be in the running for the biggest Levy masterclass of all time. Poor kid. Who? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I... I, I, I Brandon, you know my feelings Big on up, part of your part of your question. I'm, I'm staying away from that uh, that topic as long as I can. Um, yeah, Jack Clark was just a weird one, wasn't it? He's slowly turning into uh, another Carter Vickers, isn't he? Yeah. He's going to be at the club for 843 years and he'll just be in the background, someone who loan out con consistently and uh, will go down on, on record as a Spurs player we've never seen. Yeah, I mean, you look at... Great Jack left foot, apparently. Apparently he has, yeah. but the thing is, in a couple of pre-season games throughout this, he, he started to look like he's doing bits, but then nothing happens. And this was just 10 million that could have been spent elsewhere. Yeah. But I can see that I'm going somewhere with that, so I'm going to stop. Brandon has just sent in another super chat. Go on. Oh, God, me try. Pa pa how do you say it? Paqueta? Pa Paqueta. Gimme, gimme, gimme the techers. Yeah, Paqueta. Paqueta. Yeah. You know a lot about him? No. <laughs> okay, yeah. this is this is where Sim is uh, yeah. uh, most needed. attacking to midfielder. There we go. I mean, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to be talking about attackers and attacking yeah. midfielders shortly because uh, we've been rumoured with quite a few again, haven't we? paqueta has been at the forefront of of quite a few now. A lot of people are saying, and big up on Brandon. Uh, a lot of people are saying while going for a, a attacking midfielder when he doesn't fit into the Conte system. <laughs> you know my thoughts. We should be getting another attacking midfielder just because he doesn't play in, in in the regular Conte system doesn't mean we should shy away from an attacking midfielder we always need options and we know what the issue was at times against low block teams someone like a, 
uh, Paqueta Eriksson, who we're going to uh, talk about later on. For a change. For a change, yeah. Would be a fantastic option off the bench. It's uh, Conte has been on record to say we don't want a strong first eleven. We don't want people to think that they're guaranteed starters. Of course, the likes of Romero, Lloris, Sonny and Kane will know that unless they're injured, they're going to be starting. They shouldn't, but that's the way, that's how good of players they are. But the likes of Paqueta and, and, and Ericsson and, and other players we're going to be talking about, as long as they improve the squad, I'm quite happy. There we go. So we're going to do two more Super Chats, then we're going to carry on. Uh, but we've got one from Nate D, which says... My glasses, I really do need them. Yeah, um, again, we just mentioned someone, Will Smith. Uh, yeah. I almost said Will Smith. Will Smith, yeah. Will Stewart, who has been banging on about McKenney for a long, long, Don't long, long time. Don't say Will Smith and banging. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. But yeah, so uh, I would like to see McKenney. I would like to see McKenney. What about yourself? The only reason I rate this guy is because of Will. I'm go. not going to lie about it. I've seen the odd uh, US international where he's played well. Um, he'll fit into our system. He's not a box. He's not an out and out attacking midfielder. He certainly has got the engine, an engine that Basum has brought to the squad. Something that the likes of Hoyberg and um, Bentacor don't have. But McKenney will if it, hey if it's good enough for Will, it's good enough for me. There you go. Now I'm just... is that a song? We can make it a song, but yeah, I'm we can help Ryan. Levy, simply Levy is great. <laughs> no, sorry, he didn't say that. Uh, simply Levy is a tool. Today's mark. Today marks another day I've spent more than Levy with this super chat. <laughs> Big up. And uh, for anyone wondering, Ryan has spent four pound forty nine. Um, right, we've got to be careful how we go about this because yep. we both sing from the same hymn sheet when it comes to Levy. You're a bit more hardcore, understandably. Yep. Well, I say understandably, you're a bit more psychotic. Yes. So I suppose that is understanding. For me, it's, it's, it is a bit of, take a bit of calm. We've probably signed more players than majority of the Premier League. Yep. The way I look at it, the likes of a Basuma um, and a Perisic, speaking to Man United fans, they would have loved these two signings. We've brought quality in. Even Forster's uh, an upgrade on Galini. There's something in me that says we will buy some more players, but at the same time, we're not going to spend 150 million. Like everyone keeps on going about, the statement of the investment was made earlier, what, last month? It was made last month, wasn't it? I don't think, it was quite clearly, the small print suggested that it wasn't going on on, tra on, tra on, on, on transfer money, but um, yeah, more players are going to come in. Um, it's a wait and see. I don't think, I know you getting your Levy tinglers out. That sounds very wrong, but you know what I mean. But uh, I think it's it's calm. We've got three players. Who would have thought we got would have had three players in? But yeah, it's, it's a case of a wait and see. Hey, I'll be alongside you if it doesn't work out. You know that. But I think it's a, it's a wait and see game. So, so I, I'm going to have my one say on this. Go and on. then I'm going to literally... Uh, Stay away from this topic. As I, as I said, I spoke to Ben about this this morning. And Ben and Ashley, I hope you're still having a wonderful honeymoon in Mauritius. Um, do I think we're going to spend money this summer? Yep. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do I think a lot of players are coming in? Yes. Yes, I do. Do I think they're going to be there ready for when we leave Korea, which was kind of what Conte wanted? No, I don't. The three players we brought in, fantastic. Fantastic. Well done, Tottenham. Well done, the board. Well done, the club. Well done, Paratici. Um, but I'm just a little bit concerned about uh, if their players are going to be in and ready for the summer. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so that's what I'm going to say about... Uh, You've had maybe. to hold back so I, much, though. I, mate, like I said, and I said to Ben, I, right now, people go on saying, I am calm. Okay. I am calm about this. I'm not going full in. I'm not doing anything, but... But we shall see what happens mm. near the end of the window. Um, but yeah, so now, now talking of this, <laughs> oh, I didn't look at the next headline. So we have been, and everyone has probably seen this. We are now going to talk about Richarlison, and it has been broken in the Telegraph that apparently Tottenham are way off uh, the fee that. Everton want for Richarlison. Um, what's your thoughts on this, Bob? 
<laughs> another day, another player. Where, uh, what? hey, listen, I can't be a hypocrite and say, you know, I'm happy with the signs that are coming so far. Yet, what what does my head in is there's no concrete, there's no reports of a concrete bid. We're way off the valuation. What is the valuation? Did we go in with 30 million? Did we go in with 40 million? It just says we're well, what are Everton valuing? There were suggestions that they valued him at 75 million. There's no way that's going to happen. There's no way he's going to be sold for 75 million. So a bit more info, really. I would personally love Richardson, and I've, I've gone on record to say that. Five years in the Premier League, the shit has really brings to to a team. He's one of those players that you hate if he plays on the opposition, but love if he plays for your own team. The uh, adaptability to play up front and uh, along the front uh, line. He literally kept Everton up last season, six goals in the last nine nine games. And he's, there is a bit of quality about him. He's very highly rated in, in the Brazil national team. I'd love him. I'd love him. He would, like I said earlier, would he improve our squad? Hey, if Sonny uh, Kulizewski or a Kane goes down, rather than have a, an option of Mora or Bergwijn or a Scarlet on the bench, if we've got a Richarlison instead, I'd be happy with that. I'd be happy with that. I know the talk is... Richarlison or Rafinha for some reason, but um, we'll we'll touch on Rafinha in a bit. Surprise, surprise. Yep. But for me, um, yeah, if we want Richarlison, go out there and get him. Uh, but it'd be interesting to see what we valued him at. Exactly. I mean, the things I will read right now is I've got two bits from the the Telegraph where where this was uh, breaking. So first, the first one that came out was. Tottenham have gotten nowhere near Everton's valuation mm. of Richarlison. But then there was a bit more context to it uh, about 20 minutes, half an hour later, where it said Everton have held talks over a loan move for Tottenham Hotspur midfielder Harry Winks, while Spurs are also thought to be prepared to allow Lucas Moura to move in the opposite direction. If they can sign Richarlison, Tottenham, again, it repeats the last part, have gotten nowhere near the valuation. Now, this is the thing with Harry Winks... <laughs> You would have thought that this is the option, and we know Paratici is the king of player and player swap and cash yeah. deals, so that kind of fits. And then you literally thought this could happen mm. uh, via that method, and now we're hearing Lucas Mora might be chucked in. Yeah. And then you hear that we're nowhere near the valuation. Yeah. Um, so uh, as the loudest ice cream van goes past. <laughs> exactly, we're on the third floor here. <laughs> yeah. Like it's outside. Yeah. Um, From what I heard, you were chucked into the deal as well. Oh, I'd love it. I'd yeah. Love it. yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the, this, uh, the, the, the bit, obviously, we all know what's going on right now with rumours going here, there, and everywhere, yeah. and it gets blown up and, and take it with a pinch of salt. But um, what do you reckon with this deal? Do you reckon it is. Way off, because obviously... Or do you reckon this is a... Pla a lot of people are saying this is the one we're using as the smokescreen to go get Rafinha, as opposed to the other way round. Well, what are you thinking with this with this title I mean, development? Well, we have a super chat. It kind of ties into what we're okay. talking about. It's from Danny Kiriaki. You want to say a bit? Danny Kiriaki. Mem member for 17 months. Go on, my brother. Big up. Ha, ha, ha. Not surprised. They won £75 million. They are deluded. Piss off, Richarlison. <laughs> No thanks. Hope we don't get him. Rafinha is much better. Big up, boys. Now the fact that Danny's, you know, uh, Danny's nipples get erect every time he hears Rafinha's name is one, you know, separate thing altogether. But um, it shouldn't be a case. Like I've said, and I wanted to bring this up a bit later. Who cares? I don't care how much we spend on a player. It's not my job. I'm a Spurs fan. I'm not a Spurs accountant. Levy is known to be a shrewd businessman. Uh, saves money. Is a you know he, he knows how to spend money and and save money. He's got us the best stadium in the world. Paratici is a don. He brings the best players in. So how can we be hypocrites and 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 question what we spend on a player? If we go out and spend seventy five million pound on Richarlison. Who are we to judge if that's too much? Yeah. Who are we? We've gone out and spent £75 million on a Richarlison, a Rafinha, a Messi, 
a Ronaldo, whoever it is. Of please don't quote me on that. <laughs> but the reason why we, if we go out and spend a hundred million pound on a right wing back, you'd like to think the people in charge know what they're doing. Yep. Supposedly they do. What they spend on a player isn't my concern. As I keep on saying, as long as that player comes in to my football club and improves the team, that's all I'm worried about. I couldn't give two shishis. That is a new word I've just made out. <laughs> uh, I'm so holding back. Uh, people have, see, have seen in the wall know how much I'm holding back. But um, yeah, I couldn't give a, I couldn't give a damn what, what we spend. And that's not me being flippant and me not worrying about FFP and all that. That's not my, that's not my job. We've got people in place, pe people in places who, who, whose concern that is. The finance side is all up to Levy and Enoch, a Lenick as I like to call him, and the player who is brought in is up to Paratishi. If it means £100 million on a player we spend, it's because we can afford it. We can afford to do so, uh, do so without putting us in any danger. So, yeah, 75, um, I ain't got an issue with that. Yeah, it's, uh, like I said, I mean, I'm, uh, with the fact... For me, we just we need to improve this area, and it's obvious we haven't had backup since Kane. Um, or for, we've had Janssen, we've had Lorente, we've had Vinicius. We do need to get a bit of quality in there. We 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 really do, and it's it's like we're being held to ransom, like I said, over Rafinha as well. But I've just had a so this is from the Spurs Express as well. There we go. They've just said more talks taking place between Everton and Spurs over a deal for Harry Winks. Everton want a loan. Spurs want £20 million. All parties want the move to happen. So if it's £20 million that we want, mm. why don't we just say you want X for a Charleston, not £20 million? Yeah, that would be the simple way. And I don't think it's um, both clubs that want the deal to happen, unfortunately. All the fans want the deal to happen <laughs> uh, with regards to Winks. Um, yeah, if Everton want him, uh, and they're pretty good at buying all our superstars, i.e. Deli Alley, etc. Um, I'm then, loving Frank Lampard now. Well, yeah, he's doing I, the Chelsea I think, fan. Now he's buying all our players. Oh, big up, man. 15-year contract. Um, yeah, let's let's do something. Hey, let's chuck in... Uh, Mora as well, like, like, like it was suggested, and and see, well, hey, we might be able to get him free the way uh, Everton are valuing our players. <laughs> but this is the thing. I mean, Mora with this deal is is surprising to me. It's surprising. Don't get me wrong; he may need to leave. He's upgradable. Um, I just think, from what I heard, he wants to see out his contract and go back. To yeah, Spurs, it was though. muted, wasn't it? That he wants to see out his career at at Spurs. I, I think there's a, a sentimental value as well from yep. the Spurs fans for the Ajax hat-trick. Would we be weakened if we, if we got a replacement in, i.e. a Richardson or a Finia, and we saw Lucas go, would that weaken our squad? I don't think it would. There we go. So now we'll move on for Richardson and speak about another Brazilian beginning with the letter R. And Ronaldo. Danny, Dan, Danny, <laughs> Danny Kiriakou's favourite. Let's talk about uh, Rafinha, but before we do, before we do, I've just seen a super chat come in from James Coffey. So just going to bring that up, which is Cheers. Bergvine, Clark, Rodon, Hill were brought with the intention of selling them for profit, not to fit a football in need. No manager wanted them, so they won't play them, unlike the January players. That's a banging point. Yeah, spot on. Bergwijn, maybe. I think there was probably a bit more hope from the Spurs fans. I certainly was one of... Bergwijn's uh, fans and hoped yep. it'd, it'd come good because I saw something in the uh, Dutch national team every time we played for them he did well and that's why I was a bit excited when he when he came f uh, over at Spurs with regards to Clark Roden and certainly Hill uh, aka the next Messi uh, I think yeah I think uh, James is spot on he, they were brought in to increase the value and sell them on for profit Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's working for any of them, even Bergwijn. Yep. Uh, even Bergwijn. But it's spot on, spot on, James. It's absolutely bang on the money. But it's, it's a change of mindset, isn't it? And I don't know if James agrees with that. It's a change of mindset. We aren't bringing in... There's no way we brought in Perisic thinking he's going to be worth X amount in a in a few years that we can sell, it, sell him on yep. to. But soon, even that, you know, it, I reckon he's... Without sounding big-headish... 
his, his value's all, already increased by signing for Tottenham. Oh, big time. And, uh, you know, it's a big club mentality that we should be having. There's nothing wrong with thinking that. As soon as you sign for Spurs, your value increases. So, um, and, and Forster's a sensible signing as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, um, there's a change of mindset. People have come in who we know, or hopefully, there's more of a chance than a, a, of a Basuma and a Perisic making our squad better, a team better, than, say, a, a Clark Roden or a Hill. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. So now we'll, we'll get back to uh, talking about Rafinha. Um, and apparently the Leeds have said they are bracing themselves. All right, yes. Bracing themselves for an offer. So we've uh, registered mm. our interest. Mm. We've made it aware that we're interested. Yep. We've interested our interest. Yep. And now Leeds are bracing themselves. And it's not just us. It's no. not just us. It's Barca. It's Arsenal. We've reported that yeah, we've yeah. believed. This is uh, another one. What do you reckon? It's going to be. This is. I, I think this is a deal that really is going to drag. I don't uh, think this is imminent. I'm, I'm bracing for for an update. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. You know, well, let's see how it goes. Ruf, a lot of talk about Rafinha. I know a lot of Arsenal fans are getting excited about uh, getting Rafinha. There's uh, there's Rafinha in an Arsenal shirt already, and that's probably the reason why I'd want Rafinha just to piss Arsenal fans off. Listen, um, again, another. Another quality player, another player who'd give us quality down that right hand side, apart from Mikulizewski. Um And I've said before, why not bring both in? You know, if if we have got that mindset, if we are going to lose a Bergwijn and a Mora, you'd think we'd bring two quality players in. And if that is uh, Richarlison and Rafinha, then so be it. If it's one of the two, then my personal choice will always be Richarlison. I'm sorry, Danny. I know it's going to give you a bit of a droop, but um, for me, it's uh, Richarlison. But Rafinha, hey, let's let's brace for the next update. Exactly, there might be another update. Oh, I've got—I don't know why. I've just got a feeling things are going to happen today. More updates. You reckon? Actual, I, I don't. I'm not saying like an official bid will go. Well, in, everything else has happened. Exactly. Pretty much <laughs> everything else has has happened. But Joe, you know I do like Rafinha. But I, as I've as I've mentioned, I, you look at Richarlison and his work rate and what he does off the pitch. And then I, I look at Rafinha. Rafinha's like a Ginola to me mm. in the way that he's a flair player. He gets people on the edge of their seats. He's exciting. I would like to see the deal come off. I don't think both are coming off. That's for damn sure. Mm. That's for damn sure. But you're, you're, I, I've, because Simeon's brainwashed me all week, uh, I, I'm more on the Richardson uh, yeah. favour. But yeah, apparently bracing. Do you reckon, I mean, Barcelona, they put that bid in for Lewandowski as well, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, 34 so, point. Apparently it's been rejected, last I heard. Okay. 34.4 million. Um, that was a talk on Talk Sport. Um, that someone was a talk on Talk Sport. That was a talk on Talk Sport. Not just uh, No. Um, yeah, they've had a cash injection, haven't they? There was talk of them going in for Rafinha earlier on the month, but uh, the cash injection means I can go in for him again. Um, but why do you need a Rafinha when you've got uh, Adam, uh, Adam Traore, who's oh, just left. Don't say that name. Don't Man. say that name on this no, channel. I don't even go into that. Nate D is sending another super chat. Big up. Could we ever consider a Christi uh, Christian Pulisic? Possibly. I would. Do you know what? I, I really like him. I really like him. But obviously, we know we don't do business with Chelsea, and Chelsea won't do business with us. As much as it could happen, and if Will's still in the chat, I'd like to see what Will says, or any American that's in there that knows uh, what Pulisic is capable of. I, I would like him at Spurs. What about you? No. Uh, I'd just, if, is that because he's Chelsea or...? If he's not made it at Chelsea, why would he... Um, we're, that, that's the level we want to go to. They're our competitive or we're trying to compete with them. If he's not worked out at Chelsea, why would he have to work... Why should we... <laughs> Essentially, I don't want to go down an Alex route, but he would be a reject. Yeah. Okay. You know. You know what? I, I, I Plus, I think there's better players out there. I'm talking. There's completely better yeah. players. I'm not saying I want him as my number one target. I'm saying if if he came in, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Obviously, yeah. I'd much rather we go for other alternatives. I just don't think he'd improve our squad as much uh, uh, as a Richarlison or a Rafinha. Uh, uh, good player. Great. Short. That's it. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, we'll, 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 we'll now go uh, wait, on to, we'll move away from that. We'll now we'll go on to the most talked about transfer rumor that we've had recently. And Dear we are, are going to talk about Christian Eriksen. Who? 
where it's now led to believe that he is going to be deciding between um, Brentford or Manchester United. Mm. So it does look like whatever the talk was, wherever it may have been, whoever was saying whatever, whatever Sky Sports and every other reporter was saying, it looks like we are completely out of this. Can I just say, uh, there's um, how many people watching? 1K people watching, and there's only 152 likes. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Well, well let's, let's sort that out, guys. Let's sort that it's, out. Um, it's not even right. It's not even halfway, man. No. And I can can't. <laughs> so, yeah, your, your thoughts on Christian Eriksen. I just want to, uh, just before we carry on, Will Stewart's backed me up. Okay. There is a reason why I like Will. Uh, Pulisic should, isn't right for okay. us. He needs to go and play for a mid-table side. And like, like I said, I love Will. Start jumping on me. I don't know what I'm talking. Like I said, I'm talking about him. I don't want him. I'm saying if he came in, I think maybe he could do a job. I'm not saying I want him at the club. Yeah. I think he may be able to do something. But but that's essentially Will back me and, and poopered your idea. Yeah, of course you did. And I take Will's, uh, <laughs> I take Will's uh, views on American for, um, stars yeah. very very uh, strongly. So. So, yeah, but back to yeah. the deal that wasn't a deal, that is a deal, that yeah. may be coming back. We're replacing Ericsson with Ericsson. No, we're not. Yes, we are. Mm. And now it looks like we're not. Yeah. <laughs> what can you say? It's been going on for so long, man. Uh, if we really needed him, if we no, needed him, if we really wanted him on a free transfer, you'd think we would have gone in and given him what we want. Again, the money of, oh, he's not worth 350. I don't know who sounds like that. But it's not worth three hundred and fifty thousand pound a week or whatever it was Man United are offering. I don't care. Again, a player who could potentially improve our squad. Yes, will. I reckon he'd be involved in about ten to fifteen goals, uh, goal involvements this season if he did come in. But um, if we don't want him, that's fair enough. Move on. Go yeah. to the next target. It's it's been going on for too long, man. Bisuma. Woke up on Tuesday, we're linked to him. On a Wednesday, we sign him. On a Thursday, he goes in for a medical. On Friday, he's holding up the shirt. Yep. And we're chilling on a Sunday. Exactly. There um, you go. It's this whole Christian Eriksen thing, if he had just come in by himself without Basuma, I'd have been like, hell no, I yeah. don't want him back. But then once we got Basuma, I was really warming to the idea of him coming back. Really warming to the idea of him coming back. But it's it doesn't look like it's happening. And... Are you it's gutted? Are you gutted? Not Ooh. at all. No? Not at all. Because um, there are fans out there who really want him. I can understand that. Again, you know, we're talking about options, having an Ericsson off the bench. There's no way he'd start, possibly start a few games, because he would, and I think Will mentioned it yesterday on Sean Butler's stream, big up Sean Butler, um, that he, the only way he'd play in the team would, is as a deep-lying midfielder. One thing Ericsson becomes if he ever comes to Spurs, if he comes back to Spurs, he easily becomes one of our best passers in the team, alongside a Harry Kane, possibly. He bring, brings that range of passing that no other player has. So there are plus points. I'm not totally against an Ericsson, but I just don't think he's worth spending months and months over negotiating. And hey, if he doesn't want to come, if we're not his first choice, see you later. Good luck to you, mate. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I, I think if you look at the team now, if he'd come in, he knows Son and Kane, mm. so the relationship's there. You, you, you would le think that he would be on the same wavelength as Decky. Yeah. And then you look at Perisic on the wings that he'll be uh, using, and we'll be talking about the right wing back shortly. But yeah, I think he could have added something, but mm. he wasn't one that I'm like, we must sign, we must sign, we must sign. Yeah. If he came back, yeah, it would have been good to see him and... and he might have come back reinvigorated and wanting to uh, right the wrongs of how everything finished and and may have been the, the Ericsson we signed or even a, a slight improvement, but it's not one that I'm going to lose any sleep over. Yeah. What about the guys in the chat? How gutted would you be if Ericsson went, not, not, not didn't come to Tottenham, but if you saw him in a Man United shirt, would you be gutted? Would you be worried? Would you not give a damn? Me, personally, I think Man United are miles behind us. Yep. I really do. So him going to Man United, I don't think a famous last word is going to score a win in the last minute with a free kick. But um, I, don't, I wouldn't worry if he went to Man United. No. no and no. if he stayed at Brentford, even better. That, that's, 
you know what? The fact that Brentford said they were releasing him and yeah. now it's like, oh, we might not be, he might be staying. Yeah. That I think there's a lot to it. I think Brentford might be the... Uh, I think Brentford might win this. And how bad would that look on United if yeah. Brentford uh, are able to retain him? But that's enough talking about Ericsson because, it's, in all honesty, this is the one transfer deal that, like Gareth Bale returning every single season when he was at Madrid, it has been doing my head in. And now we're moving on to another player that I don't think I know a lot about. I don't know if you... I can't remember what we're saying, Bob, if you do. Tottenham inquire about PSV Iden Hoven winger Gap, Gak... Gakpo. Gakpo. I, I apologise to anyone if I have butchered that Cody. Name. Cody Gakpo. Cody Gakpo. That's it. Uh, PSV uh, winger, who you brought his stats up. They weren't bad stats last season. Good stats, yeah. Uh, 12 goals, 13 assists, so quite a few goal involvements. Um, yeah, I mean, his stats haven't been that that bad throughout. He's, you know, he's, he's averaging, what, seven, eight goals per season. Good on assists as well. Um, but we'd be lying if we... If we said, hey, it might turn out to be another Basuma deal that we hear about today yep. and it's completed by Monday. But, you know, it's, it's a player that just seems to be another player we're linked to because we need to be seen to be linked to players to come in. Uh, it's good that we are being linked to quality players now. His stats prove that he is a quality player. But... Is it's a Danny Rose situation? We'd have to go, we have to Google him to find a find. Well, I had to Google him. Yeah, we both out. did. Yeah, we, we, so we um, both did. But yeah, if he again, we can look into it a bit more. And if uh, the the um, the recruitment team believe he's going to come in and make a, it just for me it's another Lamella, another possibly Bergwijn. Yep, from Dutch league. And we spoke about the attackers from the Dutch league. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, what are your thoughts? Well, yeah, the other thing I, I looked at, and this all is going to pour more speculation with Rafinha. Apparently, Leeds are looking at him very, very heavily. Yeah. And this could be because they know Rafinha's going. Um, so it could be their backup and contingency plan. But See, that's another thing, isn't it? You know, if, if Leeds are looking at him, then again, without sounding big-headed, should we? This is the thing. I mean, I, I don't know a, a lot about him. I don't know if... Uh, People, people in the chat know uh, a bit more about him than us because, like we said, we, we don't know a lot about him, but it looks like it's another player that has come up on the list. Um, so it's another winger. And again, it's wingers, 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 isn't it? Yeah, some people have um, uh, some people have said, you know, Scorpions fan for life. Gapco is one of the most hyped players in the Netherlands. Uh, Wisdom Wolf says, how did you have to Google uh, Gapco? Hey, it's, it's just, a, you know, we're, we're probably a bit too engrossed in at Spurs and probably the Premier League we've had to but there's many of people who we spoke to have said they've had to uh, uh, find out about when I say Google okay check out his stats <laughs> I, 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 of course I knew about um, uh, Gapco which um, I, I play FIFA there you go, there you I, go. I, I, I actually did not know um, <laughs> a damn thing about him I can't confess to watching any Dutch football whatsoever um, if Danny's in the chat because Danny watches Ajax religiously uh, he may know a bit about it because he does watch the league. He'll uh, just be going on about Rafinha still. Or he'll be going on about, uh, what's the guy, Anthony. Anthony, yeah. But yeah, yeah. so uh, that is another link we have. And then we have some more information about, let's talk about this one. The Another transfer that's <laughs> yeah. going on. Let's talk about Middlesbrough's Jed Spence. Oh, yeah. So... I'm going to let you take the lead of what's going on here because if I talk about what's going on, it's going to send me into a rant and I do not want to go on a rant. Well, one of the best negotiators ever in Daniel Levy has taken over the deal or negotiations. Um, and we're, uh, what, five million apart from what Borough want. The way I see it, we've only got one good wing back at the, at the club at the moment in Perisic. And I've gone on record and people agree with me, disagree with me, all you want. Um, it'd be interesting to know what you, what you guys do think. Session you're on for me, fragile. Yep. Um, five, six good games toward the end of the season has papered over a lot of cracks, a lot of poor performances in the Spurs shirt. Will he be... I know Conte trusts him and he might turn out to be... He might turn out to be a great left wing back. Yep. I believe we're beyond that. I think we should be going for someone who's 
pretty much nearly gar- pretty much guarantees us uh, quality at left wing back, and we've done that in Perisic. Emerson again, great last half a dozen games. Before that, complete rubbish, in my opinion. He wasn't that great. Doherty, a season and a half of mediocre performances. Improved his, uh, to be fair, it was his own mentality that got him to the next legend and we, we yep. knew we had to rely on Emerson. But we don't know what he's going to be like when he comes back from the serious injury. And, of course, Regulon, who is a reggae gone, as far as I'm concerned. So, at the moment, we really need to improve in our wing-pack positions. Spence can turn out to be, possibly, turn out to be one of the best right wing-backs in the position. But I keep on, without sounding like a broken record, I would like players who are going to come into the squad and improve our squad. I don't think Spence is going to do that straight away. You know, there's talks of buying him in and loaning him straight out. We're not at that. We're, under Conte, our mindset as a fan base should be different. I'm not saying I'm not against Spence coming in. Bring him in, but he sh- is not the answer at right wing back. Um, and the fact that we're still umming and ahhing over five million says to me more about the quality of the player and how we're judging him than than actually bringing him in. A, hey, I'd, 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 there's, I'd say there's many or more better right wing backs out there. If we if we can't if we're umming and ahhing about spending fifteen million on him, twenty million on him. Then um, what does that say? What, what, what do you reckon it's down to? Okay. Or is that, is what I reckon that, it's down to. Um, no, what, what I will say is, is, how many times in our recent history have we missed out on players for five million pounds? Never. Or, or <laughs> how often does this happen? Now, you've openly admitted. And you've had to admit and, and, and announce the world. We've put 150 million into the club. <laughs> yeah. Champions League money, concert money. Yes, I understand you want to haggle a bit, but this is. We're in the red and, at the moment. And, and, and I'm going to say this. And I, I use it all the time. And fair play to David Harris, Irish Hotspur. We have not resolved this issue since Walker. Yep. How much money have we? We've chucked more than the 50 million away, trying to find the Carl Walker replacement. We've let people like Carl Walker Peters out the door, who may have done well now. We weren't to know Conte was coming in. Pay the money. We're talking five. Now, obviously, five million to you and me is a lifetime. Oh, like, to we'll me. Never, we'll, ne- we'll never see that money in our life. But for a, a club like Tottenham Hotspur with Antonio Conte, who have got Champions League, who are absolutely desperate for a right wing back and to resolve this issue. Mm. Again, haggling over five million. We've we've constantly said, haven't we, Brian, that if Conte wants him, bring him in. Yep. Maybe Conte doesn't want him. Listen, I mean, they're, they're, for you look at it, I, I'm hoping with Spence because uh, I can't see, and this is just my opinion, how a championship playoff winning right back or right wing back, whatever you want to call him, then can go straight into a Champions League competing, top four hunting Tottenham Hotspur yeah. or any team the the gap is so high yeah don't get me wrong he could be a talent that slots right yeah. in but I'm not prepared to take the risk or I wouldn't be so I would love it if he came in but there was another one like a Dumfries yeah. or a, a, someone with more experience and I say Dumfries because I'm a big fan of him but it's always this five million pounds here five million pounds there and I just wish that the club could do something and then agent at the training ground yesterday and then obviously talks are ongoing still. Yeah. That talks are they're they're bracing themselves for a bid again. Uh, bracing. Hashtag bracing for a bid. Yeah. Um so so yeah, so I think we've got a couple of super chats. We have, we have Richard Black Dog, big up, mate. Big up. Two signings that excite me. Conte and Kane extensions. And now I'm assuming it doesn't mean extensions to the houses. Uh <laughs> the contract <laughs> extensions at Spurs. Absolutely. Kane we've is down to his last two years now. Yeah. Um, it'll be 33 by the time it well, it's 29 ends. Now. 29 now. 29 to 30, 32. I think it's, it's 30 in August. Yeah, so 32 then, or whatever. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, th- I think, personally, I think Kane's going to see out his career at Spurs now. I really do. I hope so. Me and you disagreed on that, and we disagreed about certain something else, but we won't go into that. And then uh, Conte, 
Um, yeah, we've got the option of extending his contract yep. next summer. I think we'll do that. Uh, but yeah, a new contract from Con uh, with Conte would be ideal. But he's not a long-term manager, is he? Well, do you know what? I'm going to coin Sean Butler, what he said. Conte's had loads of girlfriends and it's time he finds a wife. And hopefully Tottenham Hotspur can be that wife. I yep. think him signing the contract will send a lot of faith into the Spurs players. It will send shockwaves down the Premier League and it will be a huge show of intent. And I think we need to... Uh, I think we need to get this deal done. That that will send shockwaves out, and I, I I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. Just uh, on a, on personally as well, there's a couple of people who are saying they don't have Twitter, so they can't get in touch with me with regards to the uh, signed pennant. If you want to email me, guys, I'm on bobspurtv at outlook.com. So it's bobspurtv at outlook.com, and uh, yeah, if you want to put in bid via that, we can do. The winner will be announced later on tonight or maybe in the wall Have tomorrow. you announced where the bid is or are you doing it as a blind auction? It's a blind auction. Okay. What do you mean blind auction? Or silent auction, sorry, silent. Yes. So no one knows what the bid is at the moment. No, it, uh, people will ask. So at the moment it's £70. Okay. So, the, so the, that's uh, the bid you've got to be at the uh, moment. Someone is saying that they will put, uh, they want to bid £100. So as soon as I get an email confirming that, and the bet is £100, the which That's is fantastic. It. All go to the NHS. So yeah, absolutely. That was. My apologies for the next super chat. Yeah, I've seen it from Coover. Coover. Bob, why is your coffee smaller than Brian's? I thought he favoured the shorter ones. Uh, <laughs> big up, Coove. You dirty. Um, anyway, Mark De Costa, Winks Park Exchange for Richardson, Bergwijn Park Exchange for Anthony, the Celso Park Exchange for Torres, and Sign Spence. You, Mark, sound like a Car salesman, uh, lo loving our part exchanges. Um, yeah, Winks part exchange for Richarlison. I think Winks can be part of a Richarlison deal. I get what Danny's saying, but at the same time, I'm not going to be. Uh, Danny said that what's the point of putting Winks in as 20 million if Everton's still going to hold out for 75 million? My answer to that would be if we want Richarlison and it's going to cost us 50 million, then so be it. It gets winks off our books and we'd only spend that money if we can afford it but um, one, one of the things we will say is we knew or we we we, we should be realizing that obviously this is what Parashi does and this, you know, this used to be quite common practice when we were growing up that this would be a player plus yeah. and it kind of died over the the last few years but if that's a way we can get a player off the books and bring someone in i think it's a great bargaining tool yeah especially when you look at the i mean Pau Torres, whether you uh, and a lot of people do want him. I'd like to see him there. Bastoni was my number yep. one, but obviously it looks like that is dead in the water. You still think that because I know you up until I, yeah. Last week. And then the day I said it, Inter came out again. Yeah. I mean, it could be Inter again, just talking, but yep. it looks like it is. I'm conceding defeat in that one. But Pau Torres wants to come to the Premier League. Uh, La Celso wants to stay. You you can see they make sense. Yeah. Um, and I just hope these things happen because obviously. Whether we spend the money or how we spend it, who we spend it on, using player exchanges when we have the chance is a great opportunity to get to, to yeah. a winner for both teams. And and the world class players that are involved uh, going out for you know in Winks, Bergwijn and Lacelso, three world class players who would better any team they go to. I think it's a it's a great bargaining chip. They would make any team better. So if you're watching, uh, <laughs> please. Take these players, um, but yeah, Lacelso in part exchange to Pau Torres, which has gone quiet. They've Torres has been mentioned of late. Uh, 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 Ericsson and Spence and Richarlison and Rafinha seems to be the um, the main topic of of transfer talk. But um, yeah, Torres has gone a bit cold uh, in in the, in the transfer talk, hasn't it? Well, I think I think do you know what I think that's gone cold because talks on Lacelso have gone cold. Yeah. That's what I think it is. Yeah. I think it's the, the the outgoing players we've got where it's gone cold because maybe they're not matching our valuation or may, well, whatever it may be. It may be the other way around, but I think that's what is uh, holding these deals up. Are there any more Super Chats before we talk about uh, the... Uh, I don't think there is new. Okay, so let's bring up the next topic for discussion today, which is... I think his name is Jonathan Klaus, possible options for Spurs. So this is another wing-back, 
who was the number one left back, I yep. believe, in La Liga. And Bob, you've got his stats, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, 11 assists, five goals, which isn't bad from uh, a left wing back. He, um, because there was a lot of talk about Kostic, wasn't there, uh, earlier on, and and he, he did well for Frankfurt, and uh, that's gone cold. Um, but yeah, this is one player that I did have to Google. Uh, play, plays for Lons, it's done well in the French league, and uh, yeah, would be a good option. Perisic class is not going to play 38 games in the league. Um, what? Who are the other options we've got? A fragile Cessignon, like I've said earlier, in my opinion. And then to bring uh, Klaus in, or Santa, as I like to call, call, call him, would be a great option. And hey, is is yeah, I'd be up for that. Is is another experienced player on the, on the left side, left wing back, and Cessna to have a 33 year old and a 29 year old. Uh, some of the people in the chat, my point, people are actually saying he's a right wing back. Oh, is he? Um, I was hearing he's a, a, a left wing back. He's played to the left as well, yeah. So, you can, so there you go. Maybe we've got someone that's both. Because I was about to say, if it, if it is another left back, the only the only uh, um, worry I have about that is again we're neglecting the right hand side. But if he can play it, we could have Perisic and him that can both play. Or oh, Perisic can play down the right as well. Exactly. So it's a bit of versatility and cover in case the player gets injured. Well, one thing is, uh, keep saying, you know, would he be? a player who comes in and improves the squad. Certainly down the right wing back or any wing back position, definitely someone I'd, I'd look at. And he wouldn't be that expensive as well. No. Not that that matters, of course. Uh, but here we go. I can see we have a super chat from a very good supporter of all the channels, Mr. Tim Man 007. Do you want to read it? Yeah, guys, it might be early, but I'm <laughs> very worried that Levy is back to his old tricks again and somehow going to make us have a Spursy window. What I'd say to that, Tim, and I'm sure Brian Dagger would love his say on this, it's not been a Spursy window so far. It hasn't. It hasn't. The players we've brought in, Perisic is not a Spursy window. No. A Basuma, to an extent, isn't a Spursy window. Forster, I believe, is a sensible window. Yep. If they remain the only players to come in till the end of the window, then yes, I think we can safely say, but... Big up to man. For me, it's a bit early to call it a Spursy window. The Spursy senses might be tingling with with Brian Daigle. Yep, my name. I hate that word. I absolutely hate that word. And I know you put it in apostrophe, so you probably don't think uh, you don't like that word yourself. But for me, it's a bit too early, mate. It's a bit too early. Like I said, I I, I I've said this. Um, why it might leave your senses a tingling? Is just because I don't think they're going to be there before we leave for career. Yeah. And I think it's pivotal. We look at teams like Chelsea away, first first away game of the season. That's where you have a, a Conte pre-season, which is a gruelling one, like a yeah. Pochettino one. So they're all fit, ready, raring to go, all on the same... Uh, all on the same uh, hymn sheet, know what they're doing, they're organised, they're motivated, they've had that time together, as opposed to signing players later, then they need a few months to get up to Conte standards and uh, embedded into the team. So, I, like I said, I think we will spend the money. This is the thing, I, I honestly, honestly do think we are going to spend a majority of that money. I just don't think... It's going to be, I, I think we'll be doing a lot of our business once the season has started or, or during August into September or mm. the deadline day. And that's the bit that has annoyed me. But I do, I have to rest, I have to make this abundantly clear. I do think Levy is going to spend the money. I really, really do. I am just concerned it's it won't be. a timeline that exactly. bothers you. Exa that's exactly, there you go. That's the exact thing. It, it's the timeline. Mm. That, that's it. So we have another super chat. We will be getting callers on soon. We've got people in the back end, Sam? Yeah. Fantastic. So we have one from Beto A777. We need to start going in for some quality in our back line. Mm. We're all set in the attack. We need quality centre back. So I'll, I'll just say this is just last season when we're going for Tommy Yasser, we bring in a Brian Hill. Yeah. This, this is this is what we do. This is this is kind of what we do. Um Again, this is Paratici, um, and this is our first proper summer light. Obviously, he was here for the, from July onwards, but I think this is he's had a year under his belt. 
He knows what he's doing now. He's got his uh, feet under the carpet uh, or under the desk and he knows what he needs to do. Under the carpet? Under the carpet. <laughs> under the carpet. Yeah, he's, got, he, he's uh, under the carpet. Yeah, yeah. He's got his under feet the under the desk and he knows what's going on now. So these could be huge, huge, huge smoke screens. And it could be um, defensive defensive players, imminent. But, but yeah, it, once again, it looks like we do need attackers, don't get me wrong. We do need a bit of creativity. We need uh, uh, some competition for Kane and, uh, and the, the front three. But I, I, I'm hoping a defender or defender is coming mm. soon. What about you? For, uh, first of all, Beto, uh, A777. Beto, what a player that was for Brazil. Say again? Beto. But Beto. But Beto. Yeah, oh, he was... But... Yeah. Yeah, he was quality. But Beto. Um, I, we, uh, the only thing I'd, I'd probably wouldn't agree with with defenders wing backs obviously first first point of call yeah i don't think we're set in attack i really do, do i think we need a bit more depth especially if we are moving on the likes of mora and uh bergwine i do think we we'll probably need a couple more options up front but they're the sort of players that i'd be happy to look at last yeah the fact we're we're linked with the rafinha and richardson every day means that we'll probably they're probably at the forefront. But for me, the most important aspects we need to sort out are wing-backs because that's where Correct. our um, our attacking mindset's going to come through. Our creativity is going to come from the wing-back position, certainly in this Conte's formation. But, um, yeah, uh, I wouldn't say we're all sat, set in the attack. I do believe we need at least a couple more attacking options. Yep. Certainly in my opinion, but big up, Beto. And right, I believe it's now time to start getting people on. So let's start bringing people on. And the first person coming on is Mikey, when he's back <laughs> at his desk. There he is. <laughs> oh, mate. Should we okay. get the next one on? Or? Do you want me to get the... You ready? Oh, Brilliant, let's bring Mikey on. Oh, is well, it... Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, Mike, how you doing, buddy? I'm, um, I'm good. How are you guys? All good, thank you. All good. Busy getting our feet under the carpet. <laughs> I'm, gonna <laughs> live to, I'm gonna live to regret that. Um, but yeah, Mikey, what do you want to talk about, buddy? I mean, I was looking up Jonathan because I've, uh, I, I've been following the uh, my girlfriend's a league and fan, so I've followed the league and the season, and I've watched Lens fullback Jonathan. Fleck. He's played on the right for the whole season. I don't know where you got it. Plays on the left from. Okay. His last <laughs> games he's played 45 at right wing back so how do you rate a, him how do you rate him Mikey I give him an 8 out of 10 he had a very solid season this season I remember seeing a clip online of him getting into the France squad for the first time and his family were like all around him and jumping around and stuff so that was <laughs> quite wholesome to watch but yeah he's had a he had a very good season 11 assists as you said yeah. not bad not bad especially in the French league so that's even better so yeah Fantastic. Um, I'd be very happy if we got him yeah, so so you you've really enjoyed what you've seen of him. What, do you watch it a lot, uh, French football? I don't watch it a lot. I keep up to date with it. I watch the highlights if I can find them. Uh, I watched Lens versus PSG, and he seemed to um, to be pretty a pretty good attacking threat. And if you got Romero on the right centre back position, sort of doing a defensive covering that we that we have seen for Doherty and Emerson, then I think he would make a very a very astute signing. If the Jed Spence deal, which I did see earlier on. Uh, not go through because Tottenham are prepared to walk away if Middlesbrough don't accept our 10 million valuation, which it doesn't look like they will. Mikey, what what, what would you do? I mean, 15 million for a champion. Haven't seen him play in the Premier League, so 15 million for a championship right back isn't isn't you know if we've got that extra 150 million capital investment that they're saying, and we've only spent what 25 million of that, and that's. That, that money has come, if we get the 32 million for being in the Champions League group stage alone, that's Champions League group stage money that we spent on Basuma, rising to 30 for add-ons. So we haven't even touched that 150 million yet if it is put on transfer dealings as we all hope it is. So if that's the case, then I, I don't I don't see why Levy's haggling over 5 million if we've got such a, a war chest to spend. I mean, he's not going to go out and bag a, a, a nine-figure player, so I don't see why he's haggling over five million i would I, I would love to see jed spence in but again he's not an immediate solution he would take time to gel in exactly into, yeah. the, into the system and it would 
And then once we, if we did bring Spence, then we would have to get rid because we can't have three starting fullbacks. Apparently, uh, Doherty's injury isn't as bad as we first thought because I saw the reports that Skip Tanganga and Doherty yeah. are reported for preseason. So it looks like they'll be back before the start of of the campaign. Maybe not for Korea, but back to the start of the campaign. So we'd have to ship on one of our existing fullbacks, and obviously Emerson would probably be the more sellable asset. So you sell Emerson and bring in Jed Spence, but at the same time, I I don't think he's the immediate fix that we need. And well, how comfortable would you be starting the season with uh, a Doherty and Spence as our as our choices at right wing back? They're both extremely attacking minded. Like they you obviously people will talk about. There was a debate a few years ago about what right backs England should take to the Euros and the World Cup and before his dramatic fall off, I was advocating for taking Carl Walker as a right as a as a right centre back and taking Trent for the attacking threat and Wan Bissaka for the defensive solidity way before way before Wan Bissaka's complete and utter fall off, along with the rest of the Man United squad, bar Ronaldo and De Gea. So I've always advocated for one defensive minded right back for the situation where you need a defensive right back and one attacking one for an attacking situation. But if we're going into a into a season with Doherty and Spence, I wouldn't be overly against that. I would prefer to have Doherty out of our current crop than Emerson as a backup, but I wouldn't be adverse to it, no. Okay, so Mark, also talking about outgoings, obviously we started the show talking about Paratici being in uh, Italy, and obviously there's two possible outgoings, uh, Brian Hill to uh, Sabdoria. And Rodon reuniting with uh, Jose Mourinho. What do you think mm. of those two? I think Rodon would be happy. I mean, you look at look at the ex, look at. I mean, players, especially British-born players, hardly ever leave the Premier League. Obviously, we've seen what the one that springs to mind is Smalling, Abraham, Bellingham, and Sancho are the only ones that I can really think of that have made high high level impacts. So, I'd say that doesn't happen very often, but. You know, two of them have gone to Roma and two of them are currently working under Jose Mourinho and they're having pretty solid seasons. You know, mm. Abraham, undisputed England's second choice striker and Chris Smalling, not in the England squad, but still he's been pretty, as far as I've heard, has been pretty decent in Serie A. So I think, and Mourinho was the only manager who seemed to really, you know, give road on his trust out of the four managers we've had since... Uh, since Brian rode on, he seemed to be the only one that wanted him. So it makes sense if we can get a fee because we pay what fourteen mil. I yeah. I don't think we could. I think we could get that back, but Roma aren't exactly rolling in cash. So I think they're probably trying buy him about the ten million mark, which I wouldn't. I mean, maybe that would provide the necessary funds for Jed Spence, but I wouldn't well, be. A, I I th I say that's a pretty good business for all involved because he's not starting for us. He's not, he's not a guaranteed starter. If we do buy a left-sided centre-back, then Davinson Sanchez and Ben Davis become our two, our two sort of substitute centre-backs, pushing Roden even further down the pecking order. And <clears throat> for Brian Hill, it just it hasn't worked out. It was bought under Nuno. It didn't even seem like Nuno really wanted him. It was just sort of a purchase that we made. And then it seemed like, well, you know, we've bought him. Now what? You've, you've just mentioned the left centre back, um, Mark. We've just had a super chat from. Uh, oh, here we go. Santos uh, Ganawa Denny. Um, I should be able to say that. It's, uh, it looks like an, uh, a South Indian name. But Coney Spurs empty the bank for Gavardio. Guaranteed star and is arguably one of the best left centre backs in the world at 20. 80 million euros is a bargain for him. Um, any idea? Are you, is uh, Leipzig, is he? Yeah. He's at RB Leipzig. Yeah. He's a Croatian 21 year old left centre. Yeah. Back. What do you reckon? He, I mean, I'll say one thing. He's got a bit of pace about him. He's an extremely yeah. fast centre back and he's very comfortable in possession. Leipzig play a very, Leipzig have really high pressing and play a really good possession game. Yeah. So he, he would definitely fit the start of the Premier League. Uh, I must admit, I can't remember if he was in the Dynamo because he played for Dynamo Zagreb. Dynamo Zagreb as well, yeah. I can't remember if he was in the side that beat us 3-0. I can't exactly remember. He may have moved on before that. I don't know what game you're on about, mate. I'll, I'll blank that one out. Ah, yes. <laughs> when, no, but I I think um, Josko Gvardiol would be a definite... It would, 
uh, lots of papers reporting that it was him and Pal Torres. A lot of people were saying before the Pal Torres rumors emerged in the swap deal with Marcelo that if we were always looking at Guardiola, Bastoni, and Torres as our three options, Bastoni obviously 99% unlikely to come. Pal Torres probably. I'm still a little bit, you know, I'm still a little bit uh, struck by his sudden emergence to want to come to the club when last year we were going in for him. He wanted Man United, Man United didn't buy him and then he just rejected Spurs. I'm still a bit sort of spiteful about that, you could say. Mm -hmm. So I would rather go for Guardiola, who's younger, more promising. Uh, well, not more promising, but like younger than even Pal Torres. So I'd mm -hmm. love to see Oscar Guardiola in a, in a Spurs shirt. That would... That would be an extremely good transfer. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mikey, I want to ask you as well. Obviously, uh, Rafinha <laughs> bracing ourselves for a bid. Um, do you reckon this bid that Leeds are bracing themselves for is coming from Tottenham Hotspur? Uh, I, when people say bracing themselves for a bid, that means <laughs> that Tottenham are currently trying to figure out what number they're going to offer. You know, Arsenal have, Arsenal have stepped up their interest. They're looking at all the Brazilian forwards in the Premier League. Richarlison, Jesus, uh, Rafinha. Um, thing is, the reason why I think we could be Arsenal to the signing, because apparently Chelsea have now entered negotiations yeah. for him as well, but they also, their Chelsea have entered negotiations for him. Barca probably won't get him because of the money involved. If it's a straight shootout between us and Arsenal, if Chelsea somehow don't make it i think he chooses us and a because i think saka is more enshrined in the arsenal starting 11 than dejan kudasevsky is in ours i'm not saying that he's and i'm not but like saka is arsenal's golden boy he's the you know academy prospect he's basically a guaranteed starter every game whereas if rafinha came in he would definitely challenge kudasevsky for that right wing spot definitely challenge him and so i think he would make more of an impact at Spurs. I'd love to see I'd love to see both Rafinha and Richarlison come. I know that's obviously an extremely <laughs> an extremely unrealistic sentiment, but you know, Richarlison provides cover, especially on the left and through the centre, and then Rafinha would provide cover on the right, perhaps even perhaps even start on the right. And so I would both would be a uh, that would sort of fix our forward forward line uh forward line. <laughs> but well, it'd certainly give us more options, wouldn't it Mike? It would give us more options, but if I had to pick one between sort of Richarlison and and Rafinha, I think Rafinha is the better player, but Richarlison would provide cover in more positions. So for a squad point of view, I'd have to pick Richarlison. But well I do think Rafinha is the better footballer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just the the news coming out today about deals sort of we've had up until now, it's been 100 miles an hour, link, 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 bid being prepared, and now it's just sort of, Today, it's just sort of grinded to a halt. Spence negotiations failing. No, you know, Rafinha deal being prepared for what seems like a week now. And yeah, if we're not if we're not careful, other clubs will act fast. You know, we've acted fast already. Maybe it's our it's our turn to happen to us, and I don't want to see that happen. So, yeah, so, got to act um, faster. Mikey, there's one more question I want to ask you, which is, obviously, you've been coming on the show for a long time now. You know my views are on the board and everything and are you where where are you right now and I, I don't mean with this about levy i mean do you see you know what i've been saying in this show and a, a couple of shows where i do actually believe we're going to spend the money but i don't think we'll have the majority of players needed by the career tour which was kind of what conte wanted how do you feel on that do you reckon that we might get a few players in before we get on to career or do you reckon it's going to be uh after we come back and then throughout August? I don't think Paratici can get the amount of business that we need done or that he wants to get done before Korea Tour, which starts mm. in, what, 10, 10 days now, is it? We, July the 10th, the, I, I think we fly out to Korea. July the 10th, okay, so more like, what, three weeks left. That's, or two weeks, actually, not even three, two weeks. Well, that's, that's, that's not enough time to get in i think we probably sign one more player before then not sure where not sure who but i think we definitely sign at least one more player before korea and start to embed them into the squad but you know i i'm not 
convinced that we'll get as much of a but i don't think it'll be as in previous windows i think there will be some links obviously right down to the last seconds of the transfer window there'll be links and re newspaper reporters trying to get as many stories out as they can even if they're unfounded you still hear tottenham interested in Wolves yeah. midfielder Ruben Neves randomly out of the blue and then no one else says anything about it. You always get those random links. But yeah. I think most of our business will be done before the Chelsea game. I think that's that's sort of my benchmark is that if you want to get in high profile first team signings, you want to see them perform well early. You want to get them in before a big game like Chelsea away. That would be so, my sentiment, shall we say. Absolutely. Definitely before the season. Before yeah. the season starts. 100%. There we go. Yeah. All right, Mikey. Big up, Mikey. Thank you for coming in and uh, have a great weekend, buddy. You're welcome. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Uh, Pleasure, mate. Bit. See you later, mate. Bye, on, bye, mate. So I believe we don't have anyone else. Is that correct? Brilliant. Okay, so that is it from us. It's been a, a takeover from uh, myself and Bob whilst Ben is having a honeymoon and uh, just to get you to 2K subscribers. Uh, yeah, on. yeah. I'm about 30-odd, 40-odd uh, away on Bob Spur TV. I'm uh, normally on Saturday nights, 10.45pm uh, on Bob Spur TV. Yeah, the show's a bit more laid back. It's uh, basically uh, a bunch of people. It's got, a, it's got a bunch of people sitting in a pub talking random stuff and uh, not very child-friendly at times, but, hey, it's, uh, it's a laugh. And we do speak about Spurs, football in general, and have the odd uh, game show as well. But just a reminder, guys, this is available to auction off at the moment. If you want to contact me via Twitter at bobspur73 or via my email, bobspurtv at outlook.com. If you want to put a bid in, all donations, all um, money that's uh, proceeds you know, raised with this will be going towards uh, the lovely NHS charity that I did a 24-hour stream for absolutely brilliant and also just let you know obviously i'm part of tottenham on tour if you want to subscribe you can find us there the the hyperlinks are actually in the description so you don't even need to search for us the boys have put it there so just click on the hyperlinks and you'll be able to get us uh we wish you all a very very good weekend and hopefully it'll be a weekend where there is more concrete moves for spurs yeah and like we said have a great weekend like comment subscribe and as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.